Shabbat Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to the parable of the vineyard Torah portions. This is week 37. Shalach. When you set up or step up or sent, which it's sent for the 12 spies. So in this Torah portion, the name comes from the, the first distinct, distinctive words in the, in the, the portion from Numbers 13.2. Uh, this portion tells the story of the 12 spies sent to assess the promised land, uh, commandments about offerings, the story of the violation of the Sabbath, and the commandment of the tzitzit. Tzitzit's been a hot topic lately, so a lot to talk about this evening. And uh, for the prophet section, we're going to be looking at reading through Isaiah 57. So without further, further ado, let us get started but i'm gonna check the chat and make sure everything is working and it looks good okay looks good <clears throat> heavenly father yahuwah we just come before you in yahusha's name we thank you for the ability to gather together like this to search out your torah and see the wondrous things that are out of your law Please open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts to understand your word better, that we may grow thereby and our faith be increased. And as we just wait for your day of your return, in Yahusha's name we pray. Amen. So let's get started with week 37, Numbers 13. If you just joined me from the second Baruch live stream, welcome back. All right. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, this is number 13, and Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Send thou men, that they may search the land of Canaan, which I give unto the children, I'm so, sorry, and to the children of Israel, of every tribe of their fathers shall ye send a man, every one a ruler among them. And Moses, by commandment of Yahuwah, sent them from the wilderness of Paran, all those men were heads of the children of Israel, and these were their names of the tribe of Reuben, Shamua, the son of Zakur, of the tribe of Simeon, Shaphat, the son of Hori, of the tribe of Judah, Caleb, the son of Jephunneh. Now, this is really interesting, and we're going to touch on this in just a moment, but this is this is the same Caleb, the Kenizzite, who was actually not uh, Israel-born, but we see that he is the leader of Judah. Not only has he been grafted into Israel, but he's the leader of Judah. We'll talk about this here in a little bit more in a second. Of the tribe of Issachar, Egal, the son of Joseph. Of the tribe of Ephraim, Oshea, the son of Nun, which this is actually Joshua. We'll see that in just a second. Of the tribe of Benjamin, Palti, the son of Raphu. Of the tribe of Zebulun, Gadiel, the son of Sodi. Of the tribe of Joseph, namely of the tribe of Manasseh, Gedai, the son of Susi. Of the tribe of Dan, Amiel, the son of Gamali. Of the tribe of Asher, Sethur, the son of Michael. Of the tribe of Naphtali, Nabi, the son of Vospi. Of the tribe of Gad, Gul, the son of Maki, Makai. It was like Malachi, huh? Now here, and it clears it up here. These are the names of the men which Moses sent to spy out the land. And Moses called Oshea, the son of Nun, Jehoshua. This is actually Joshua. And we'll see it all throughout the scriptures, Joshua, son of Nun. Joshua, son of Nun. So, Oshea, son of Nun. But let's talk, let's go back up for a second, because this is actually a really interesting point here, that Caleb, the Kenizzite, which will actually, uh, is it right here? Yeah, so uh, we know that, that uh, Caleb is a, a Kenizzite, so, which is actually an Edomite from Esau. Check this out. Genesis 36, 40 through 43. And these are the names of the dukes that came of Esau, according to their families, after their place, by their names, Duke Timnah, Duke Av Alva, Duke Jetheth, Duke Aholibama, Ahol Ahol Duke Elah, Duke Pinon, Duke Kenaz, this is the Kenazites, Duke Timon, Duke Mib Mibzar, uh, and we'll just, anyways, keep reading but... Uh, he is Esau, the father of the Edomites. So here we have an Edomite that not only is grafted in, but it becomes the ruler, the prince of the tribe of Judah. So 
the reason I think this is so interesting, well, for many reasons, right? But I have to just bring this up. You know, I, I hate that I do, but it is what it is. And maybe because I see it way more often than you guys see it. I probably, I don't want to exaggerate, at least a couple comments a day I get, I see, that people call me the white devil, you Esau, Edomite, you're filth, you're trash, you know, just all kinds of just hateful things. And you guys have seen it. I trust you. I know you've seen it. Listen, I, I love our brothers and sisters in Yahusha, whatever color you are, you're white, black, green, red, yellow. I don't care. And none of us should care because it doesn't matter. Paul said there's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither male nor female. There's neither bond nor free for you're all one in Christ or Messiah Yahu Yahusha, right? So this movement, you know, whether, listen, whether the, 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 the Hebrew Israelites were a specific color, listen, I'm not going to sit here and talk about it. But what I am going to talk about is the racism that people just hate me and hate people that are white, right? And and these are these are coming from fellow believers in Yahusha, people that really believe in, in in Messiah, believe in the resurrection, and they really just hate us, you know, because of well, you know, what happened 400 years ago. But they call us Esau, they call us Edomites, you know, whether we are or not, I don't know, you know, I really don't know. Um, my research has shown otherwise, but we're not going to talk about that tonight. But I think the point of the matter is here, you know, Torah is Torah is our is you know it's our uh, it's our law. It's the guidepost. It's the it's the mark. It's it's everything. And so if if we see in in Torah that an Edomite, because of belief and faith and because of his actions, not only was grafted into Israel but became a ruler of Judah. Look, come on. Stop with the nonsense, brothers and sisters. Stop it. Anyways. So uh, another thing that we see, and we'll actually, we'll, we'll actually, we'll just keep reading this, but we'll see that, and most of you know this story, of course, uh, 10, right? 10 of uh, the leaders brought forth an evil report. They're like, yeah, the land's great. We'll see the land's great. But, you know, there's giants and all, I'm, I'm taking away the thunder from the Torah. I'll, I'll let it speak for itself. But what's interesting we'll see here is it's the tribe of Judah and the tribe of Ephraim that bring back the good report. What we're talking, if you were with me in the second Baruch live stream earlier, you know, I kind of have a feeling that these are the two lampstands, that these are the two, these are the two sticks from Ezekiel 37, which we're going to read here in a little bit. And, you know, we have a representation of a Gentile grafted in and a native born. I don't know if you guys are picking up what I'm putting down, but pretty interesting. And we're going to read Ezekiel 37, all of it. We're going to go through some rabbit trail. Tonight might be a little longer. Um, I've been trying to keep these to an hour, but this one might go a little bit longer. Um, so I don't know. What do you guys think? I just thought that was so interesting. I never, I never put two and two together that this same Caleb was the leader. Anyways. Anyways. I just thought that was cool. So let's keep reading number 13 and then we're going to read Ezekiel 37. Okay. Okay. So again, we read about the, the 12 different men. These are the names. And Moses sent them to spy out the land of Canaan and said unto them, Get you up this way southward and go up to the mountain and see the land, what it is, and the people that dwelleth therein, whether they be strong, weak, few, or many, and what the land is they dwell in, whether it be good or bad, and what cities they be that dwell in, whether in tents or in strongholds. And what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood therein or not, and be ye of good courage, and bring of the fruit of the land. Now the time was the the time of the first ripe grapes. The first ripe grapes is late summer, early fall, like a August September ish time frame. So they went up and searched the land from the wilderness of Zin unto Rehob, as men come to Hamath. 
And they ascended by the south and came unto Hebron, where Ahiman, Sheshai, and Tamai, the children of Anak, were the Anakim. Now Hebron was built seven years before Zoan in Egypt. So this is uh, this is what their path looked like. Right here. And they came unto the brook of Eshkol and cut down from thence a branch with one cluster of grapes, and they bear it between two upon a staff, and they brought the pomegranates and of the figs. So, I mean, this is this is huge. This is a huge cluster of grapes. One, it says one cluster of grapes, right? And that two men had to bear it upon a staff. For those of you that were with Justin and I on the first first Adam and Eve uh, life study, we saw that the fruits that came from Eden were of this kind of size, humongous, like one, a fig was the size of a watermelon. And they bear it between two on a staff and they brought the pomegranates and of the figs. This place was called the brook Eshkol because the cluster of grapes, which the children cut down from thence, Eshkol means cluster. And they returned from searching of the land after 40 days. Interesting that's 40 days. We know we see 40 days so often as a time of testing. We saw Yahusha in the wilderness, 40 days being tested, right? The, the, the 40 years in the wilderness, which is actually, we'll see, we're going to see a little bit later, the 40 years in the wilderness is actually because of the disobedience of the 40 days here that they were spying out the land. But uh, so we'll see here this this. Uh, the sending of the spies was actually a test, and we'll see what we'll see what happens. And they went and came into Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of the children of Israel unto the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land whither thou sentest us, and surely it floweth with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. So they're like, Hey, we went where you told us to go, and surely the land. Is full of milk and honey, and here's the fruit. I and mean, I'm, I'm sure you know, as we've already seen, this fr this fruit is huge, right? So there, everybody would be like, "Whoa!" Right? Nevertheless, the people be strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are walled and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. Now, listen, of all the things, I can understand why they would be a little worried about the giants, but, but, we have to remember everything they saw already. I mean, they saw. The, they, they, I mean, just even just what happened in Egypt, how everyone in their their village, you know, had light, but everyone in Egypt, it was full of darkness and the dying cattle and the flies and the lice and the, the waters turned to blood and, you know, everything. The, the firstborn sons dying, you know, and then being led by a pillar of cloud, the, the Red Sea parting. Come on, you know. But it's like, at the same time, what have we seen? We've seen miracles. We've seen, you know, we've seen our lives completely changed by belief in Yahusha, the word, right? Believing in the word, just like they believed in the word. How could we doubt for even a second? You know, if we read earlier in Ezekiel 20 that he's going to gather us into the wilderness like he gathered our forefathers, whether it be blood forefathers or grafted in forefathers, you know, or us grafted in, you know. And there are forefathers from grafting in, whatever it may be. Are we going to learn from their mistakes? But seeing the giants, listen, I get it. I get it. You know, what am I going to sit here and say, oh, I wouldn't be scared of a giant? I get it. I get it. But with everything that they've seen, they've seen. They had to know that Yah would be with them. They had to. Or, you know, their hearts were, were dark. They're, they were blinded, maybe. The Amalekites dwell in the land, verse 29, the, the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are able to overcome it. There you go. There's faith right there, right? Caleb's like, come on. Let us go. We're able to overcome it. But the men that went up with him said, 
we be not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they brought up an evil report of the land, which they had searched unto the children of Israel, saying, The land through which we have gone to search it, it is a land that eateth up the inhabitants thereof. And all the people that we saw in it are men of great stature. And there we saw the giants, the sons of Anak, which come of the giants. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers. And so we were in their sight. And this is another big point here because there's a lot of people that, that hold to the Sethite view. If you don't know what the Sethite view is, it's um, it's basically saying that that it was the sons of Seth that went into the daughters of men in Genesis six. Let's read it actually real quick. Um, I thought I had that up here. Yeah, let's read this a little bit. And this is a topic for a lot of us that changed our whole perspective, understanding of what's going on in this world. Genesis six. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons of Elohim saw, this is Benai Elohim, the sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all which they chose. And Yahuwah said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that he is also flesh, that, that he also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of Elohim came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men, which are of old men of renown. So this is very clear. And you have modern day scholars and people that come out of Bible college that'll just totally just tear this up to pieces and just say it's not what it says, they're not real giants, you know, so on and so forth. And Yahuwah saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts in his heart were only evil continually. Uh, anyway, so so very clear, and, and the reason I say that, that this numbers passage is important because I mean this is very clear, and it says then we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come from of the giants, and we were our own size as grasshoppers. So basically, they're saying they they seemed like the size of a grasshopper in front of these people. They're real giants back then. Jude said the same thing beloved when i gave all diligence to write unto you the common salvation it was needful for me needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints this is what we're talking about in second baruch about how the the vatican right the the beast the revived the holy roman empire uh were the ones that were that made the way of truth hidden for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our Yahuwah into lasciviousness and denying the only Elohim and our Adonai, Yahusha HaMashiach. Now listen to this. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, that how Yahuwah has saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. That's what we're reading about now. Now listen to this. And the angels, which kept not their first state, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the day, unto the judgment of the great day. This is a quote from Enoch. And then we see Peter, the same thing. But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Adonai that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their, their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Right? Here we go. Same thing. We saw in Jude. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not. And their damnation slumbereth not. For if Yahuwah spared not the angels that sinned, that's very clear, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. The sons of Elohim saw the daughters of men that they were fair and took them wives of all which they chose. They created giants. So this numbers passage confirms that there were actual giants and the people were tiny in their sight. But I want to go back for a second and I want to talk about this. This is really cool. So again, we have the 10 evil reports and the two good reports come from Caleb, the Edomite grafted in as the ruler of Judah. And we have Joshua, son of Nun, as Ephraim. And we know that Joshua 
was a prototype or a a a, a, a type and shadow of our Messiah Yahusha. And they actually had the same name, of course, right? Interesting, huh? But check this out. Let's read a little bit of Ezekiel 37, a little bit of Rabbit Trail. Uh, we actually read earlier, we read this is the resurrection, right? So starting at verse, let's start at verse 14. And I shall put my spirit in you, and ye shall live, and I shall place you in your own land. Then ye shall know that I, Yahuwah, have spoken it and performed it, saith Yahuwah. The word of Yahuwah came again unto me, saying, Moreover, thou son of man, take thee one stick and write upon it for Judah and for the children of Israel his companions. And then, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. And join them one to another into one stick, and they shall become one in thine hand. And when the children of thy people shall speak unto thee, saying, Wilt thou not show us what thou meanest by these? So he's saying, like, what does this mean? Say unto them, Thus says Yahuwah Eloheinu, Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, which is in the hand of Ephraim, and the tribe of Israel, his fellows, and will put them in with him, even with the stick of Judah, and make them one stick, and they shall be one with mine hand in mine hand. And the sticks whereon thou writest shall be in thine hand before their eyes, and say unto them, Thus saith Yahuwah Eloheinu, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whether they be gone, where we are right now. And will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be a king unto them all. And they shall be no more two nations, neither shall they be, they, they, neither shall they be divided into two kingdoms any more at all. Neither shall they defile themselves any more with their idols, nor with their detestable things, nor with any of their transgressions. But I will save them out of their, all their dwelling places wherein they have sinned, and I will cleanse them. So shall they be my people, and I will be their Elohim. And David, my servant, shall be king over them. This is the this is the the, the seed of David, the root of David, right? This is Yahusha. And they shall all have one shepherd. And they shall also walk in my judgments and observe my statutes and do them. So if anyone tells you the law is done away with, how silly is that? So the law was in effect. The law goes out of effect and the law is back in effect again. Negative. We will be doing Torah when we are gathered. Hallelujah. We'll be able to do his feast days. We'll be doing the Sabbath perfectly. What a day. And they shall dwell in the land that I gave, have given unto Jacob, my servant, wherein your fathers have dwelt. And they shall dwell therein, even they and, the ch and their children and their children's children forever. I don't even know if we can understand this concept right now. And my servant David shall be their prince forever. Moreover, I will make a covenant of peace with them. It shall be an everlasting covenant with them. And I will place them and multiply them and will set my sanctuary in the midst of them forevermore. My tabernacle also shall be with him. Yea, I will be their Elohim, and they shall be my people. And the heathen shall know that I, Yahuwah, do sanctify Israel, when my sanctuary shall be in the midst of them forevermore. Yes. So, long story short, really interesting that uh, the only two good reports come from Judah. Again, the, the Edomite grafted in, and Ephraim. And we see the two sticks of Judah and Ephraim in Ezekiel 37. And we also see that out of all these, only these two are able to enter the land. Interesting, right? At least I thought it was. Humor me. <laughs> all right. I love that sister. I love that scripture too, sister. I really do. All right. Let's do numbers 14. Okay. Okay. Let me just close up some of these tabs here. Oh yeah, and then one more thing, one more, one more witness, one more witness actually, because we know we read Second uh, Peter and we read Jude. 
had it been quoting Enoch, because Enoch's the only one that talks about the angels being imprisoned in eternal darkness. This is Enoch uh, chapter 6. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said one to another, Come, let us choose us wives from among the children of men and beget us children. And Semjaza, who was their leader, said unto them, I fear you will not indeed agree to do this deed, and I alone shall have to pay the penalty for a great sin. They all answered him and said, let us all swear an oath and bind ourselves by mutual imprecations not to abandon this plan, but to do this thing. Then swear they all together and bound themselves by mutual imprecations upon it. And they were all in, they were in all 200 who descended in the days of Jared on the summit of Mount Hermon. And they called it Mount Hermon because they had sworn and bound themselves by mutual imprecation upon it. And these are the names of their leaders. Semiazaz, their leader, Arakiba, Ramael, Kokabael, Tamiel, Ramael, Danel, Ezekiel, Barakiel, Asael, Armaros, Batarel, Ananel, Zakiel, Samsapel, Satarel, Turel, Jamjel, Sariel. These are the chiefs of tens. You know, just a side note on this, it's kind of a it's kind of a worldly thing, but it's just so crazy how they just put it things in plain sight. So, you know, we know the angels are stars, right? And these stars <clears throat> fell and came down first on the earth upon Mount Hermon. Check this out. No, is it Paramount? Yes. Not videos, images. Would you know that this is Mount Hermon? How many stars do we have here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 19, 20, 21, 22. I wonder how many names we just read in Enoch. But yeah, go figure. You have 22 stars around Mount Hermon. How interesting is that? So let's see. 1... Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Is that right? Wait, did I miss something? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Oh, and then some Jaza would be twenty. So, eh, maybe not. I thought that was going to match, but maybe not. It's too off. Well, I guess maybe you can add in Azazel. That would be 21. And we're missing one. Hmm. Maybe it doesn't work. But either way, thought it was interesting. Thought it was really interesting. So, and just to finish, and then Enoch 7. And all the others together with him took unto themselves wives, and each chose for himself one, and they began to go in unto them and to defile themselves with them. And they taught them charms and enchantments and the cutting of roots and made them acquainted with plants. And they became pregnant and they bare great giants whose height was 3,000 L's, that's tall, who consumed all the acquisitions of men. And when men could no longer sustain them, the giants turned against them and devoured mankind. And then remember we saw in Numbers actually that they said that the the land, yeah, the land eateth up the inhabitants thereof. Yeah, and the giants turned against them and devoured mankind, right? They're eating up, eating them up. And they began to sin against birds and beasts and reptiles and fish to devour one another's flesh and drink the blood. Then the earth laid accusation against the lawless ones. Interesting. All right. So let's go to... Verse 14. And all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would Elohim that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would Elohim we had died in this wilderness? They're pray they're sort of praying, you know, like, I wish God would have just left, uh, you know, I wish we had just died in Egypt or died in the wilderness. They're just, ugh. And wherefore hath Adonai brought us into this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children should be a prey. We're not better for us to return into Egypt. And they said one to another, let us make a captain and let us return into Egypt. 
And I don't know if you remember from last last portion, they were complaining about the food. They're like, oh, you know, we had we had onions and leeks and in watermelons and whatever else. You know, we had it better in Egypt. So let's go back to Egypt. Like just crazy. Let's go back to slavery. And you know, and and that's unfortunately, you know, that's a lot of believers. They'll believe and they'll they'll go back to their filth. Then Moses and Aaron fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel. These are humble people, right? They could they could have just been like, "Hey, y'all are crazy. What are you thinking?" What do they do? No, they're humble. They fell on their faces before all the assembly of the congregation of the children of Israel, and Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephunneh, Jephunneh, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes, and they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying. The land which we pass through to search it, it is an exceeding good land. If Yahuwah delight in us, then he will bring us into the land and give it us, a land which floweth with milk and honey. Only rebel ye not against Yahuwah, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bred for us. Their defense is departed from them, and Yahuwah is with us. Fear them not. This is truth, right? We saw that with Jericho. Well, Jericho hasn't happened yet, but I mean, we saw that with Jericho, right? The walls just fell down. They were in their hands. These are men of faith. They saw it. Men of vision. They saw it. Do we see it? Do we know? But all the congregation bade stones with them with stones, and the glory of Yahuwah appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, How long will this people provoke me? And how long will it be ere they believe me? For all the signs which I have showed them. I agree. Hallelujah. I agree. Yeah, just how it says, "How long will pro people provoke me?" And you know, Yahusha said it again later on when um, when um, he said, "How long will I suffer you?" Right? How long shall I be with you? And that's when he he healed. Um, oh, where was that? I can't remember what scene that was. Anyways, it's just good to see that he said it again later on. <laughs> so he's like, you know. How can they, how are they provoking me? You know, even after I've showed them all these signs. And he says, I will smite them with pestilence and disinherit them. And I will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. So he's like, I'm just going to destroy these people and I'll bring you a new nation, Moses. And Moses said unto, unto Yahuwah, then the Egyptians shall hear it. For thou brought us up this people in thy might from among them. And they will tell it to the inhabitants of this land. For they have heard that thou, Yahuwah, art among these people that thou, Yahuwah, art seen face to face, and that thy cloud standeth over them, and that thou goest before them by di by daytime in a pillar of cloud and in a pillar of fire by night. So he's like, if you do that, people of Egypt, the Egyptians shall hear it, right? And then they'll tell it to the people here. Now, if thou shalt kill all these people as one man, then the nations which have heard the fame of thee will speak, saying, because Yahuwah was not able to bring this people into the land which he sware unto them, Therefore, he has slain them in the wilderness. All right. So Moses is pleading with him. Moses is ple pleading on behalf. These are the same people that want Moses dead, right? Moses could be like, yeah, you know what? You know what? Forget them. They want me dead. Sounds good. B bring me another people. No. Moses was praying on their behalf to Yahuwah. Spare them. Spare them. And now I beseech thee, let the power of my Adonai be great, according as thou hast spoken, saying... Yahuwah is long-suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. Pardon, I beseech thee, the iniquity of these people according unto the greatness of thy mercy, and as thou hast forgiven this people from Egypt even until now. And Yahuwah said, I have pardoned according to thy word. So, really, really interesting passage. We see here, that Yahuwah can be reasoned with. Now, I will say that, of course, he knows everything. So even when he said, you know, I'm going to just destroy them all, he knew that Moses was going to be like, no, 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 don't do this, you know. But at the same time, you know, can Yahuwah be swayed? Well, I, I think so. I'll show you. I want to show you something. We've seen this. We saw, we saw Yahusha do it. Matthew 15 
21 to 28. Then Yahusha went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy, me, mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she, then she, then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Kind of a rough statement, right? But hey, it is what it is. And, you know, as far as, you know, she, he wasn't saying, like, you're a dog. But, like, you know, different different groups of people had different uh, terminologies. We get, actually get that from the Book of Enoch, as early as the Book of Enoch. Um, like, uh, like the wolves or the Egyptians, the, the the wild asses or the children of uh, of Ishmael, um, the, you know the the lions were or the tigers were. Um, anyways, it goes on so on and so forth. The the Philistines, I believe, were the dogs. Um, anyways, so you know he's like, no, I'm I, I, I'm, you know, I'm not here. I'm only here for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, right? And he's like, you know. It's not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. And then Yahusha answered and said to her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that hour. Hallelujah. So we see that our, our master can be reasoned with. I think that's awesome. Right? I think it's awesome. I don't know. Maybe I just think too much stuff is awesome. So again, so we see Moses like reasoning with Yahuwah and he's like, all right, I pardon according to your word. <laughs> then he says, but, right? But as truly as I live, all the earth shall be filled with the glory of Yahuwah because all those men which have seen my glory and my miracles, which I did in Egypt and in the wilderness and have tend to me now these 10 times and have not hearkened to my voice, surely they shall not see the land, which I swear unto their fathers. Neither shall any of them that provoked me see it, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit with him and hath followed me fully. Him will I bring into the land whereinto he went and his seed shall possess it. Now, the Amalekites and the Canaanites dwelt in the valley. Tomorrow turn you and get you into the wilderness by the way of the Red Sea. And Yahweh spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard the murmurings of the children of Israel, which they murmur against me. Say unto them, As truly as I live, saith Yahuwah, as ye have spoken in my ears, so will I do it to you. Your carcasses shall fall in this wilderness, and all that were numbered of you, according to your whole number, from twenty years old and upward, which have murmured against me. Doubtless ye shall not come into the land concerning which I swear to make you dwell therein, save Caleb the son of Jephunneh and Joshua the son of Nun. But your little ones, which ye said should be a prey, them will I bring in, and they shall know the land which ye have despised. But as for you, your carcasses, they shall fall in this wilderness. And your children shall wander in this wilderness 40 years. And ye shall bear your whoredoms until your carcasses be wasted in the wilderness. After the number of the days which ye search the land, even for 40 days, each day for a year shall you bear your iniquities, even 40 years, and ye shall know my breach of promise. So again, they're being punished 40 years in the wilderness because of the 40 days of, of uh, spying out the land and bringing back an evil report. I, Yahuwah, have said, I will surely do it unto the, all this evil congregation that are gathered together against me. In this wilderness they shall be consumed, and there shall they die. And the men which Moses sent to search the land who returned and made all the congregation to murmur against him by bringing up a slander upon the land, even those men that did bring up an evil report upon the land died by the plague before the Lord. But Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, which were of the men that went to the searched land, lived still. And Moses told these things unto all the children of Israel, and the people mourned greatly. And they rose up early in the morning and got them up unto the top of the mountain, saying, Lo, 
we be here, and we will go up into the place which Yahuwah hath promised, for we have sinned. And Moses said, Wherefore now do ye transgress the commandment of Yahuwah? But it shall not prosper. Go not up, for Yahuwah is not among you, that ye be not smitten before your enemies. For the Amalekites and the Canaanites are there before you, and ye shall fall by the sword, because ye are turned away from Yahuwah. Therefore Yahuwah will not be with you. But they presumed to go up unto the hilltop. Nevertheless, the Ark of the Covenant of Yahuwah and Moses departed not out of the camp. Then the Amalekites came down, and the Canaanites which dwelt in the hill, and smote them, and discom discomfited them even unto Hormah. So, anyways, interesting chapter here. And we just see what continues to happen to those that do not believe, that do not keep to the word. I want to read a couple of verses here about trusting in him. Jeremiah 17, 7 through 8. Blessed is the man who trusts in Yahuwah, who tru whose trust is Yahuwah. He is like a tree planted by water that sends out its roots by the stream and does not fear when heat comes, for its leaves remain green and is not anxious in the year of drought, for it does not cease to bear fruit. John twenty twenty nine. Yahusha said unto him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. And I want to read one more passage. It's really, really interesting here. 2 Ezra 1, 35-37. This is in, in a strong rebuke to Israel. Uh, I will give your houses to a people that will come, who without having heard me will believe. To those whom I have shown no signs will, I do, will do what I have commanded. They have seen no prophets, yet will recall their former state. I call to witness the gratitude of the people that is to come, whose children rejoice with gladness. Though they do not see me with bodily eyes, yet with a spirit they will believe the things I have said. That is beautiful. This is such a beautiful passage of scripture. So to the he says right here, to those of whom I've showed no signs, right? And just earlier we just read in numbers, right? That he rebuked them because they saw the signs and still yet did not believe. So he's commending us, the people that have not seen the signs, although we've seen the miracles, right? We've seen the miracle that he's done in every one of our lives, how he's brought us from our old life into our new life, how he's made us a new creation, how he's forgiven us of our sins, our egregious sins. You know, And some of us have seen uh, demons cast out. Some of us have seen uh, miraculous healings. Listen. He's still doing those miracles, and I still believe. You know, I, I really don't know how much time we have left, and this is another reason why I really want to uh, gather together. Those of you that were in the second Baruch live stream know that I really, uh, for those of you that can move, I'd love for you to come out here to the Ozarks. And um, I just really believe if we have a community that have faith and are walking in His commandments, that we're going to see the latter rain. You know, Yahushua said that we would do things greater. That he did. And some of the, you know, in some of the Acts of the Apostles, we saw some of that. Are those days going to come again? Joel prophesied, you know, the, the former rain, moderately in the latter rain, more increase, more incre I can't remember the exact wording, but basically the latter rain would be, would be more intense. So, you know, this is a good lesson for us. You know, while we haven't seen the pillar of cloud by day and the fire by now by night and we didn't physically see the parting of the red sea we all believe it happened right i know you do so how can we be faithless how can we have doubt that he's going to deliver us how we can't can't okay and and we saw that you know Joshua and Caleb those that continued in belief, they lived. They lived. All right. Let's go to 15. How are we doing on time? How, are, how long have we been doing this for? 44 minutes? Okay, actually, we're doing pretty good. Oh, absolutely. Robin Peterson, there is evidence. Absolutely. We live in a, we live in a very blessed time. Dead Sea Scrolls. We we know Scripture is true. We know it's legitimate. Anyways, yeah, Shelley, will will we be safe in the beast system? Listen, if we if we can gather together and we have a strong community, 
Maybe we can. Maybe we can. Maybe. Come on down. Come on down to the Ozarks. Come on down to the Springfield area. All right. Numbers 15. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land of your habitations, which I give unto you, and will make an offering by fire unto Yahuwah, a burnt offering, or a sacrifice in performing a vow, or in a freewill offering, or in your solemn feast, to make a sweet savor unto Yahuwah of the herd of the flock, then shall he that offereth his offering unto Yahuwah bring a meat offering of a tenth deal of flour, mingled with a fourth part of a hin of oil. And the fourth part of a hin of wine for a drink offering shalt thou prepare with a burnt offering for a sacrifice for one lamb. Or for a ram thou shalt prepare for a meat offering two tenth deals of flour mingled with the third part of a hin of oil. And for a drink offering thou shalt offer the third part of a hin of wine for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. And when thou preparest a bullock for a burnt offering, or for a sacrifice in performing a vow, or peace offerings unto Yahuwah, then shall he bring with a bullock a meat offering of three tenth deals of flour mingled with half an hin of oil. And thou shalt bring for a drink offering half an hin of wine for an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah. Now listen to this. We've been talking a lot about being grafted in, right? We saw Caleb, the Edomite, the Edomite grafted in. And if a stranger sojourn with you, or whosoever be among you in your generations, and will offer an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, as ye do, so shall he do. Oh, another, another interesting point, uh, speaking of being grafted in, you know, I actually just did a study as well that uh, I actually believe that uh, Elijah was grafted in. Um, and, I, you know, I hate to just drop that bomb on you and not give you all the evidence. But, um, uh, yeah, maybe maybe we'll do it at the end of this. If you guys, if we have time, maybe remind me, maybe I will show it to you. But, um, yeah, interesting, very, very interesting. So, yeah, if a stranger sojourn with you, who, whoever be among you in your generations, and will make an offering made by fire of a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, as you do, so shall he do. One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you. An ordinance forever in your generations, as ye are, so shall the stranger be before Yahuwah. One law, one law and one manner shall be before you, and for the stranger that sojourneth with you. And Yahuwah spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye come into the land whither I bring you, then it shall be that when ye eat the bread of the bread of the land, ye shall offer up an heave offering unto Yahuwah. Ye shall offer up a cake of the first of your dough for an heave offering, as ye do the heave offering of the threshing floor, so shall ye have it. Of the first of your dough ye shall give unto Yahuwah an heave offering in your generations. And if ye have erred and not observed all these commandments which Yahuwah hath spoken unto Moses, even all that Yahuwah hath commanded you by the hand of Moses, from the day that Yahuwah commanded Moses, and henceforward among your generations, then it shall be, if ought be commit if ought be committed by ignorance, so this is a, uh, a sin of ignorance, without the knowledge of the congregation, that all the congregation shall offer one young bullock for a burnt offering, for a sweet savor unto Yahuwah, with his meat offering and his drink offering according to the manner, and one kid of the goats for a sin offering. And just by the way, I know this is a lot about uh, sacrifices and offerings, which I'll be honest with you, I don't have a lot of wisdom on because it's not something I studied quite often. But I really want to go through these Torah portions, and I believe the, the longer we study these, the more we'll be able to start picking and, and seeing shadows and and really you know just getting some wisdom out of these. But for now, we're kind of I'm just kind of reading through them. And if some of you have more wisdom on these, please put it out in the chat. And for those of you uh, may, maybe uh, watching this as a recording, go ahead and put it in the comments, and that way we can just all grow together. 
And the priest shall make an atonement for all the congregation of the children of Israel, and it shall be forgiven them, for it is ignorance. And they shall bring their offering, a sacrifice made by fire unto Yahuwah, and their sin offering before Yahuwah for their ignorance. And it shall be forgiven all the congregation of the children of Israel, and the stranger that sojourneth among them, seeing all the people were in ignorance. And if any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinneth ignorantly, when he sinneth by ignorance before Yahuwah, to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. Ye shall have one law for him that sinneth through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel, and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. But the soul that doeth aught presumptuously, whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproacheth Yahuwah, and the soul shall be cut off from among his people. So again, we just continue to see that Yahuwah treats the, the stranger or the native born the same, whoever whole takes hold of his covenant. Because he hath despised the word of Yahuwah and hath broken his commandment, that soul shall be utterly cut off, his iniquity shall be upon him. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. And they found him gathering sticks, and they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. And they put him in a ward, because it was not declared what should be done unto him. So uh, it, it was uh, it was strictly forbidden to go and uh, in, to go and and gather on the Sabbath. And uh, there's a couple things I want to talk about here in just a second on this. But here, let's just finish this up real quick. And Yahuwah said unto Moses, "The man shall be shall be put shall be surely put to death, and all the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp." And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones, and he died as Yahuwah commanded Moses. So here, let me just pause there real quick. Hold on. Yeah. So, you know, people will stop here and say and see and say, well, Yeshua, you know, broke the Sabbath, so so can we. So let's talk about this for a second. Did Yeshua actually break the Sabbath? <clears throat> Exodus 35, 1 through 3. And Moses, Moses gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together and said unto them, These are the words which Yahuwah hath commanded, that ye should do them. Six days shall work be done, but on the seventh day there shall be to you a holy day, a Sabbath day of rest to Yahuwah. Whosoever doeth work thereon shall be put to death. And it immediately talk, immediately after talking about work, it says, "Ye shall kindle kindle no fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day." This is not talking about a fire, you know, to, to stay warm. If it's freezing outside, he's not saying you can't stay warm on the Sabbath. No, no, no. Or some people will, see, you know, Jewish law says they can't start a car because it's, you know, a fire. That's not what we're talking about here. This is talking about. This is talking about um, for a lot of for a lot of uh, skill sets in that time. A fire had to be made. You know, all all the smithing, um, just a lot of jobs uh, back then needed fire to do their jobs, right? So let me ask you a question. So when we see this man here gathering sticks, what do you think he was gathering sticks for? They knew what he was going to do with it. He was gathering sticks to do what? To kindle a fire to work, right? So let's talk about what Yahusha did. Matthew twelve one through eight. At that time, Yahusha went on the Sabbath day through the corn, and his disciples were unhungered, and they began to pluck the ears of corn and to eat. But when the Pharisees saw it, they said unto him, Behold, thy disciples do that which is not lawful to do upon the Sabbath day. So here's the big here's the big difference, okay? So we're not supposed to gather on the Sabbath. We're not supposed to go out and, and harvest, right? But if they're out and about and they're hungry, they're allowed to pick the corn and eat it, even from a stranger's house. This seems like it could be stealing, but it's not. Check this out. I'm going to read the rest of this here in a second, but just for just to, to go for this. Deuteronomy 23, 24 through 25. When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard, then thou mayest eat grapes, thy fill at thine own pleasure, but thou shalt not put any into thy vessel. So, so it says right here, you can go in and eat, but you're not to, you're not to gather it, right? When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's corn, standing corn. So big difference here. Yeshua and the disciples were allowed to do this because they were what? At that time, Yeshua on the Sabbath went through the corn, and his disciples were hungry, right? So they began to eat. They didn't gather, but they were allowed to eat. This is a lawful, this is lawful, right? But this was against the Pharisees' law, the traditions of men. 
So what do you have to say? But he saith unto them, Have you not read what David did when he was hungered, and they that were with him, how he entered into the house of Yah, and did eat the showbread, which was not lawful for him to eat, neither for them which were with him, but only for the priests? Or have you not read in the law how on the Sabbath days the priests in the temple profane the Sabbath and are blameless? But I say unto you that in this place is one greater than the temple. But if ye had known what this meaneth, I will have mercy and not sacrifice, you would have not condemned the guiltless, the guiltless for the Son of Man is... Lord, even of the Sabbath day, is master of the Sabbath day, right? So again, it was legal for them to do this. He did not break a law. And we know that he was sinless, right? First Peter 2, 21 through 22. For even unhear unto ye were called, because Messiah also suffered for us, leaving an example that ye should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. So what did what laws did Yehoshua break, right? Then came together unto him the Pharisees, and this is Mark 7, sorry, and certain of the scribes which came from Jerusalem. And when they saw some of his disciples eat bread with, defi with defiled, that is to say, with unwashed hands, they found fault. For the Pharisees and all the Jews, ex except they wash their hands oft, eat not, holding the traditions of the elders. Right? This is a tradition of men to wash their hands before you eat. And when they come from the market, except they wash, they eat not. And many other things there be which they have received a hold as the washing of cups and pots and brazen vessels and of tables. They had all these traditions, right, of how to wash this and how to wash that. Then the Pharisees and the scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashed hands? I mean, think about this. They actually had to sit there and watch them and try to catch them by not washing their hands. He answered and said to them, Well has Isaiah prophesied, prophesied of you hypocrites as it is written this people honoreth me with their lips but their heart is far from me how be it in vain they do worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men it was a commandment of men that they couldn't pick grain on the sabbath for laying aside the commandment of yah ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do and he saith unto them full well ye reject the commandment of yah that ye may keep your own tradition for Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, If a man shall say to his father or mother, It is Corbin, that is to say, a gift by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father. So basically, they had a tradition that basically allowed them to not um, – you know, take care of their, their mother and their father if they like they gave the temple instead or something like that. So basically, right here, making the word of Yah none effect of none effect through your tradition which you have delivered, and many such things ye do. So just wanted to clear that up as far as the Shabbat. So we're not to go out and gather. We're not to go out to the grocery store. That's that's our current harvest. We're not to go out to the grocery store and buy and sell on the Shabbat. We should by, we should do that in preparation and get everything we need for Shabbat. Okay, so now we go. Here we go. Here's an awesome commandment. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they may make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their throughout their generations. Okay? And that they put upon the fringe of the borders of a riband and blue. So, real quick. Who is the children of Israel? Isaiah 41.8. But thou, Israel, right? He's saying, you, Israel, you are my servant. Another name for you is Jacob, whom I have chosen. And another name for you is the seed of Abraham, my friend, right? So Israel is Jacob. Jacob is the seed of Abraham. So who's the seed of Abraham today? For ye are, this is Galatians 3, 26 through 29. For ye are all the children of Yah by faith in Yahushua HaMashiach. For as many of you has been baptized into Messiah have put on Messiah. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For you are all one in Messiah Yahushua. And if ye be Messiahs, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. So let's back up. This is for the children of Israel throughout their generations. We're part of those generations, brothers and sisters. And that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue, and it shall be unto you a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of Yahuwah and do them that ye may seek not after your own heart and after your own eyes, after which you used to go a whoring. Hello, all of us. 
that ye may remember and do all my commandments and be holy, be set apart unto your Elohim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your Elohim. I am Yahuwah, your Elohim. Zitzit, you are the children of Israel. It says this is a commandment throughout your generations. If you haven't done so yet, I ask you to pray about it. I don't want you to get them because Adam said so. I want you to, I want you to get them because Yah said so and because his word said so. Because you're Israel, it says throughout our generations. Are you afraid somebody's going to think you're weird for wearing these? Do I get some weird looks with it when I walk around in my college campus? Yeah. Do I still wish somebody would ask something? I do. No one's asked me yet. And I'm not going to go around and be like, what? You're, lo you're looking at these? You're looking at these? You want to talk about it? I'm not going to do that. Come on. And, you know, that's not really even supposed to be for a talking point. It's not supposed to be a show-off thing. I just, you know, I think that some people don't wear these because they're embarrassed. Would you be embarrassed to wear these? A lot of us aren't. It's a growing, it's a growing community. A lot of us aren't. But you know, I'm still waiting for that moment where I'm I'm walking somewhere. I'm like, I see somebody with zitzit. I'll be like, oh, brother or sister. You know, uh, I haven't it hasn't happened. It hasn't, but I want it to. But really, this is for us. This is for us. For us to look down and just remind us to keep his commandments always. Always. This is uh, Numbers, Numbers 15. I'll read it again. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations. Again, you are Israel and throughout their generations is forever. Consider it, brothers and sisters. And let me tell you something. I I grew, I uh, I YouTube a video how to. My hands are so. Thankfully, I had two different sisters actually just randomly mailing me some. Uh, actually, I had three, three sisters. Sophia Yanni's Yanni's wife made me a pair. Uh, sister Sherry Stadel. I don't know if she's in here now, but she was in the. Uh, um the chat and another sister made me these as well um so i don't know maybe eventually we can get a, a zit seat um set up going maybe we can have some brothers or sisters that have extra time maybe have extra yarn maybe we can maybe we can put some funds together and supply them some maybe they can make a ton uh and maybe you guys can just pay for shipping and handling i don't know but I want you all to have these. If you don't have them yet, I want you to pray about it. Pray about it. It's you are Israel, and it says throughout your generations. I feel proud to have them on. I really do. I really, really do. But again, it's not it's not for a show off thing, and it's not for a conversation piece. But it's for us to remind us. And I tell you, there's there's times where I just I look down. And I'm like, yeah, okay. So. Just consider it. Just consider it. How are we doing on time? All right, a little bit over an hour. A little over an hour. All right. So I want to I want to just uh, finish up with uh, the prophets reading. Yeah, maybe we, again I don't make the zitzis. I don't. But maybe there's some sisters out there that can make them. Um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about it. Okay, so there's a couple already that want some. So, um, man, we'll figure out some logistics. We'll figure it out. Uh, I don't know about that. Melon seed skiff for women, they can only be on a shawl. I don't know about that. I don't. I don't know where the scripture is for that. That's that could be a, a tradition. That could be a Jewish tradition. 
I'm gonna be honest with you because I don't see that anywhere. Yeah, so Sherry, Sherry, if you wanna, Sister Sherry, if you wanna start making them, prayer beads are not fringes, no, no, they're not. Jay Steely's, great to see you. Good to see you. The Great Deception, Zeet Zeet. Over, over bus. I am six six three fifty with a gray beard. The last things they see are my tassels. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> Love it. Corey Fowler, what's going on, bro? Good to see you. Anyways, so we're going to follow up on this. Maybe we should have a supply chain going. Maybe we should have um, – maybe we should fund certain brothers or si – we'll, 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 should we leave it in the hands of sisters? Maybe we'll leave it in the hands of sisters. Uh, maybe we'll get some sisters. Maybe we'll get Sherry Stadel and maybe a few others. Maybe we'll supply them with plenty of, uh, of um, string, and maybe they'll make them, and maybe I'll – We'll hook them up with those that need them. We'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. We'll get some logistics going. We'll get them going. We'll get we'll get a show for our blast for for the seat seat. Who wants a show? We're gonna do a show for our blast for the seat seat. All right, let's do let's do Isaiah. 57 and we'll uh <clears throat> yeah yeah we'll do it okay isaiah 57 isaiah 57 Y'all didn't know I could speak Spanish, did you? All right. Isaiah 57. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And the merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Isaiah 26, 20 through 21. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, Yahuwah cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. He will protect, protect us, right? So... But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. This is something that I've been studying very closely now because next week, I wanted to get it out this week, but I just couldn't. Next week, I will have the video about the, um, the great harlot, Mystery Babylon. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye the wide mouth and draw the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Let's talk, let's look at this, let's look at this. Nahum. When's the last time you read Nahum? Nahum three one through four. Woe to the bloody city! It is full of lies and robbery. The prey departeth not. The noise of a whip and the noise of the rattling of the wheels and of the prancing horses and the jumping chariots. The horseman lifteth up both the bright sword and the glittering spear. And there is a multitude of slain and a great number of carcasses. And there is none end of their corpses. They stumble upon their corpses because of the multitude of whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mistress of witchcrafts that selleth nations through her whoredoms and families through her, through her witchcrafts. Who is that bloody city? Oh, 
O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often I would have gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chick chickens under her wings, and you would not. Oh, I mean, there's more to this. Yeah, so before that. And if you say, oh, uh, yeah. And if you say, we have been in the days of our fathers, we would not have been partakers with them in the blood of the prophets. Wherefore, ye be witnesses unto yourselves that ye are the children of them which kill the prophets. Fill you up then the measure of your fathers, ye serpents, ye generations of vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? Wherefore, behold, I send unto you the prophets and wise men and scribes, and some of them ye shall kill and crucify, and some of them ye shall scourge in your synagogues and persecute them from city to city, that upon you may come all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel unto the blood of Zechariah, son of Barachias, whom ye slew between the temple and the altar. Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often I would gather, them, gather thy children together, even as a hen gathereth her chickens on her wings, and ye would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. Ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. Verse 5, inflaming yourselves with your idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Clefts, yeah, cliffs of the rocks. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They, they are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive in comfort of these? Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Even thither wentest up thou to offer thy sacrifice. So they are just one on every high hill. And you know the Ashra poles and uh, sacrificing their children unto unto Baal. It's all the same nonsense that's going on today, just in a different way. Behind the doors also in the post hast thou set up thy remembrance, for thou hast discovered thyself to another other than me. Right? Jerusalem went a whoring, and art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy bed and had made a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest. And thou wentst to the king with ointment, and didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers afar off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, yet saidst thou, There is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou wast not grieved. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared, that thou hast lied, and hast not remembered me, nor laid it to, to thy heart? Have not I held my peace even of old? And thou fearest me not, I will declare thy righteousness and thy works, for they shall not profit thee. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee, but the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them, but he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. You see the same thing here in Isaiah 66, 1 through 2. Thus saith Yahuwah, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? And where is the place of my rest? It's within you, brothers and sisters. You are the temple of the Most High. For all those things hath my hand made, and all those things have been, saith Yahuwah. But to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Hallelujah. The contrite ones. Let's look up the word contrite. Actually, let's look up the biblical definition. Yeah, of course it wouldn't work. <laughs> well, let's just look up the regular definition then. Oh, here it goes. It works. Sweet. Contrite. Crushed. Literally powder. Figuratively contrite. Crushed. Destruction. So a lowly person? Yeah. A poor and a destroyed man. Broken, right? 
broken. We saw earlier in Isaiah 60, right, to heal the brokenhearted. Yeah, to bind up the brokenhearted, the contrite, the heart of the contrite one, the brokenhearted. For I will not contend forever, neither will I always be wroth. For the spirit should fail before me and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth, and I smote him. I hid me and was wroth, and he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways, and I will heal him, and I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. This is an interesting passage. We see something really similar uh, in Hosea 6. This is the 6,000 years. Come, let us return unto Yahuwah, for he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten us, and he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us. And the third day, he will raise us up, and we shall live in his sight. So what's really interesting is after what? Uh, yeah, on the, so after, the, after the second day, which is the second 2,000 years, so after 4,000 years, which is the time of Yahusha, he will revive us, right? And and the third day after the second after the third two thousand years at the end of the six thousand years right he will raise us up, how cool huh? Verse nineteen I I this is a Yahuwah saying I create the fruit of the lips peace peace to him that is far off and to him that is near saith Yahuwah and I will heal him you know it's so something really interesting about that it says here he creates the fruit of the lips. And we see something very similar in Proverbs 16. It says, The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from Yahuwah. So, right? So he gives us the heart. He gives us the answer of the tongue. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but Yahuwah weighs the spirits. So then he says right here, Commit your works unto Yahuwah and your thoughts will be established. Commit thy works unto Yahuwah, and thy thoughts shall be established. Right? So he creates the fruits of the lips. He creates the, the heart, the renewed heart. He's the one that circumcises your heart. But the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up a mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my Yahuwah to the wicked. No peace at all. So... Interesting portion, Torah portion, and prophet section. I had a great time doing this with you, brothers and sisters. Uh, let's see how long we've been going. 76 minutes? Maybe we'll take a few questions. I don't know if we have time for that or not. Um, I want to give you guys a little nugget. So I know a lot of you guys, some of you are with me on understanding that um, Jerusalem is Mystery Babylon, and you're gonna you're gonna see it next week when I get this video done. But I'm gonna give you a little uh, I'm gonna give you a little teaser real quick. Check this out. Actually, I'll just show you from my. Did I, actually, did I read from this last week? Uh, maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Oh, let me see. Well, someone tell me if we talked about why. Why the double cup was in um, Mr. B uh, the harlot's hand? Did I explain that? I don't know. Let me see. Let me see. Let's see here. I'm going to pull it up. I'm going to pull up my. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to read it from you. Ezekiel 23. Okay. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Just, actually, I'll just pull these up on. Let's see. All right, give me just a moment while I pull this together for you. 
18, 1 through 6. I'm going to give you a sneak peek of what we're, what we're going to be learning. Give me just a moment. I want to show you guys this. All right, so I'm gonna show you why I'm gonna show you why Mystery Babylon has a double cup in her hand. You will not be able to tell me that 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 Jerusalem is not Mystery Babylon after this. Okay, Revelation eighteen one through six. And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every un unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and Yahuwah hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled to her double. So she's got a double cup right listen to this comfort ye comfort ye my people saith your elohim speak ye comfortably to jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished that her iniquity is pardoned for she hath received a yahuwah's hands double for all her sins now if that's not clear enough check this out right so again speak to jerusalem she received double right now check this out Ezekiel 23, the word of Yahuwah came unto me, saying, Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt, and they committed whoredoms in their youth. There were their breasts pressed, and they were, they were bruised in their teats of their virginity. And the names of them were Ahola, the elder, and Aholibah, her sister. And they were mine, and they bare sons and daughters. Thus were their names. You ready? Samaria is Ahola, and Jerusalem Aholibah. And Ahola played the harlot when she was mine, and she doted on her lovers, on the Assyrians, her neighbors, which were clothed in blue with captains and rulers and all them with desirable young men, horsemen, riding upon horses. Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, with all them that were chosen men of Assyria, and with all of whom she doted, with all their idols she defiled herself. Neither let she her whoredoms, I'm sorry, neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt, for in her youth they lay with her, and they bruised the breast of her virginity, and poured their whoredoms upon her. Wherefore I have delivered her into the hand of her lovers, into the hand of the Assyrians on, upon whom she doted. These discovered her nakedness. They took her sons and her daughters, and slew her with a sword, and she became famous among women, for they had executed judgment upon her. And when her sister Aholiba, this is Jerusalem, saw this, she was more corrupt in her inordinate love than she, and in her whoredoms more than her sister in her whoredoms. She doted upon the Assyrians, her neighbors, captains and rulers, clothed most, clothed most gorgeously, horsemen riding upon horses, all of them desirable young men. Then I saw that she was defiled, and that they took both one way, and that she increased her whoredoms. For when she saw men portrayed upon the wall, the images of the Chaldeans portrayed with vermilion, girded with girdles upon their loins, exceeding in dyed attire upon their heads, all of them princes to look to, and the manner of the Babylonians of Chaldea, the land of their nativity. And as soon as she saw them with her eyes, she doted upon them, and sent messengers unto them into Chaldea. And the Babylonians came into her, into her, into the bed of love, and they defiled her with their whoredom, and she was polluted with them, and her mind was alienated from them. So she discovered her whoredoms and discovered her nakedness. Then my mind was alienated from her, like as my mind was alienated from her sister. Yet she multiplied her whoredoms in calling to remembrance the days of her youth, wherein she had played the harlot in the land of Egypt. Remember in, in Revelation it says, and uh, and um, in her sins were called to remembrance for she doted upon her, their paramours 
whose flesh is as the flesh of asses and whose issue is like the issue of horses. Paramours are like concubines. So yeah, next time you think of the band Paramour, Justin told me about this. Thus thou callest to remembrance thy, the lewdness of thy youth in bruising thy teats by the Egyptians for the paps of thy youth. Therefore, Aholibah, thus saith Yahuwah, Behold, I will raise up thy lovers against thee, from whom that my mind is alienated, and I will bring them against thee on every side, the Babylonians and all the Chaldeans, Pekod and Shoah and Koah and all the Assyrians with them, all of them desirable young men, captains and rulers, great lords and renowned, all of them riding upon horses. And let's see, and they shall come against thee with chariots, wagons, and wheels, and with assembly of people, which shall set against thee buckler and shield and helmet round about. And I will set judgment before them, and they shall judge thee according to their judgments. And I will set my jealousy against thee, and they shall deal furiously with thee. They shall take away the, thy nose and thine ears, and thy remnant shall fall by the sword. They shall take thy sons and thy daughters, and thy residue shall be devour, devoured before the, by the fire. They also shall strip thee out of thy clothes and take away thy fair jewels. Thus I will make thy lewdness to cease from thee, and thy whoredom brought from the land of Egypt, so that thou shalt not lift up thine eyes unto them, nor remember Egypt any more. For thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, Behold, I will deliver thee into the hand of them who thou hatest, into the hand of them from whom thy mind is alienated. And they shall deal with thee hatefully, and they shall take away all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare. And the nakedness of thy whoredoms shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. Now listen to this, right? I will do these things unto thee because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen. This is literally what it means to come out of Babylon is the opposite of this. I will do these things because thou hast gone a whoring after the heathen and because thou art polluted with idols. So going a whoring after the world and its ways, right? That's what Jerusalem did. Jerusalem went a whoring after the world and its ways, right? Now listen to this. Listen very carefully. Remember, again, we're talking about a cup filled to the double. Thou hast walked in the way of thy sister. Therefore, I will give her cup into thine hand. So Jerusalem not only drinks its own cup, but it also drinks the cup of her sister. This is why she has a cup filled to the double. Thus saith Yahuwah Elohim, thou shalt drink of thy sister's cup deep and large. Thou shalt be laughed to scorn and had in derision. It containeth much. Thou shalt be filled with, now this is some this is some mystery Babylon language. Thou shalt be filled with drunkenness and sorrow, with a cup of astonishment and desolation, with a cup of thy sister Samaria. Thou shalt even drink it and suck it out, and thou shalt break the sherds thereof and pluck it off thine own breast. For I have spoken it, saith Yahuwah. So, if there's any, if there's any other uh, questions about it, I don't know if there's anything else you can uh, you can say about that. But I think that's pretty pretty clear, and I think that is a slam dunk for who Mystery Babylon is. There's your two cups. In any case, so. Aaron James, I know that America sounds like it's a, a better fit because uh, we're the world power, but you have to understand this goes way back before America. America, London, the Muslim Caliphate, we're all just they're all just pawns in this game. This is the age old this is the age old fight. America is just a pawn. The whore rides the beast. That's right. Did you know that Jerusalem that Zionism wouldn't exist if it wasn't for the papacy. You know, the papacy actually organized all this. But anyways, that's for another time, and I will, uh, we will expound more on that. So anyways, but yeah, that video, the uh, the video, it's going to be 25 minutes roughly, uh, like 24 minutes, and um, it's going to go through all those points. Anyways. And Larry Newport, I know. I know that's still not enough for you, bro, but don't worry. I love you, man, anyways. I love you. <laughs> uh, any case. So, any, uh, any questions? Any questions? Oh, it won't be in ha is, uh, all that whole land. You know what's funny, actually? I want to show you something. 
that whole area in another video I'm gonna do after this series is gonna be another interesting one. I started just I started just reading the the minor prophets over and over again, like Zephaniah, Joel, Micah, um, Amos, Hosea. Um, I, I just reading all those, and it talks about every one of those books talks about the day of Yahuwah. And it talks about this day of destruction. So I want to I share something with you that's really interesting, and I will uh, I will share it with you. But I want to do something real quick. So this whole area is going to be destroyed, and it's going to freak everybody out because your modern day pastor tells you that this thing right here is the fulfillment of the regathering of Israel false the original israel borders anyways was like here right an area big enough 1500 1500 miles by 1500 miles by 1500 miles new jerusalem is going to be sitting right here right this whole land all of this is going to be destroyed so my point was when i was going through all these minor prophets it's like you know in that day um, you know, Damascus will be destroyed in that day. Jerusalem will be destroyed in that day. Gaza will be destroyed in that day. Uh, Ashkelon, uh, will be destroyed, right? Ashdod will be destroyed. Ashkelon, Gaza, uh, the land of the Philistines, Egypt, um, you know, the land of the, uh, uh, the Amorites, the land of Ammon, the land of Esau. So basically I started like, I, I don't, um, I'm not gonna show it to you right now, but I started plotting each one of these, like, I was like, plot. Plot, plot, and I was like covering the Assyria will be destroyed, right? Um, this this whole area is just gonna be destroyed, and so my thesis is that I'm gonna I'm gonna test with scripture before I put a teaching on, of course. But all this land is gonna be destroyed in one swipe. Why? Because that land needs to be cleansed before New Jerusalem can set down on her borders, which is roughly here. But yes, this, there's many harlots, many harlots, harlot, 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 great harlot. But there's only one mystery, mystery Babylon on the great, the bloody city with her cup filled to the double. Samaria is oh, I'll show, oh, I should have put that back up for you. Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom. So when I talked about the two women, it's talking about the two the two uh, kingdoms, the northern kingdom which its capital was Samaria and the southern kingdom which its capital was Jerusalem. In any case, well But yeah. In any case, near near Newport. I love you, man. I love you, bro. I don't know where you're watching this stuff. I believe Samaria is DC. Oh man. Anyways, all right. So, I love you, bro. I really do. I really, really do. Listen, America is 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 just a love child of Rome and the world. I mean, this is this is a this is a modern day America is modern day Egypt. We're the world power, right? Right. Oh, remind you later, verse fourteen. Uh, I don't know, but I got to jump off here though. It's getting a little late. Oh, about Elijah being grafted in. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on. Ah, uh, let's. I need to get. I need to get this study together for you. It's gonna take me a few minutes, and I'm gonna have to do it while we're live. 
Okay, remind me. Is David Shearer in here? Bro, remind me next week. I want to go over that Elijah is was a Gentile grafted in um, tidbit. I will do it. I didn't have it ready for tonight. Thank you for reminding me, though. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, Tishbite. Yeah, look up Tishbite. You're not, you're not going to find. <laughs> uh, anyways, it also said he was, a, if you guys want to search this on your own, it said he was a sojourner. If you look in there, it says that he was a stranger, right? Um, so anyways, it's, a, it's an interesting little study, but um, yeah, I had a lot of fun tonight. I had a lot of fun scouring the scriptures with you all. And um, so... I probably got another 10 to 12 hours of working on that video and it should be done um, because it's really important because let me, let me ask you this question. You know, if most of the Christian believing world thinks that, that that land over there is the fulfillment of the regathering and that whole land is decimated, right? What are people going to think? They're going to be like, do I trust that? the word anymore because you know that's not supposed to happen <laughs> you know what I mean so anyways anyways hello from old Jerusalem Woo! it's gonna be a rough area soon all right let's do a quick prayer and we'll, we'll end this evening and I'll just do one more no 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 more show far it's, it's a little late no, no more show far tonight N Z Y R. I'll I'll answer that question when I get, when I get to that study. All right, Heavenly Father Yahuwah, we just come before you in Yahusha's name. Thank you for allowing us to gather like this. Thank you for allowing us to edify each other by reading your Scripture, which is a, a lamp unto our feet. Yahusha is is the light. Thank you so much for him. Thank you so much for salvation. My belief in him. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, and thank you for your Torah. Thank you for waking us up to your Torah, knowing that it is not done away with, knowing that it is, it is eternal throughout our generations. We just love you, and just want to pray for all of my brothers and sisters here. We know that we each have different needs and have different struggles. Pray that you show each and every one of us your will, Heavenly Father. I ask this in Yahusha's name. Amen. All right, brothers, sisters. Hey, great, great. We uh, have a great Shabbat. My father's able to do a war on the war scroll. Oh, it's an awesome scroll. It is an awesome scroll. There's so many teachings I want to do. I just run out of time. But anyways, love you all. Shabbat Shalom. If you can, just give this a quick like. Or dislike before oh there's no dislikes you know I'm not gonna recommend any dislikes yet don't dislike the Torah portion you can dislike our other studies but don't dislike the Torah portion that's just straight rude <clears throat> anyways love you all hey Shabbat Shalom have a great Shabbat tomorrow.